All right, everyone, you ready to learn about how to make a lot more money with Merch by Amazon? Sorry this video is a little bit late, but let's do it. All right, everyone, now that I'm actually on the computer here, I want to give a huge shout out to Ken Reel, who decided to crowdsource me a chair because I was sitting in a lawn chair. And he thought that wasn't acceptable. So thank you, Ken. Thank you for everyone who donated to that. All right, before we actually get into the presentation itself, I want to give you guys a few quick updates on Merch Informer as I've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and as well as jump on my phone real quick to show you just a few quick things. So first, let me just go over here. We push an update two, three, maybe a month ago, a couple weeks ago now, to make Merge Informer completely keyless. So there are there's no need for any any keys at all. You simply sign up, three day trial, so everyone should go check it out and start using it right away. It's a lot, lot quicker. So just to show you, we're over here in the product search. We just type dog and like that. The results are back in. You can come through here. You can check out the BSR price history. Pretty simple. It's kind of a crazy design. So other than that, uh, we still have the Merge Hunter here, super helpful. The trends that are happening right now when this video is being made is kind of crazy with all the kneeling and those trends, that trend specifically, selling like hotcakes. So if you guys haven't jumped on it, I would just give it a look. As you can see, selling really, really well. So if you haven't tried out Merge Informer or you tried it before, it's a lot faster. We made a ton of improvements, so everyone should go check it out. So the last thing I want to show you here is actually on my phone. Depending on this, when this video gets released, it's probably going to be in the next few days from now, Merge Informer is pushing a mobile app out. It's going to be free for everyone, and then you're going to be able to log into your Merge Informer account. So let me just see if I can get... Here's my phone. There we go. So we're going to open up Merge Informer here. This is what it's going to look like. Now, as you can see, let me try to get in here. You have product search, merch hunter, favorites, guide, and then the login and log out button. So as you can see, I'm already logged in here. Now, if you go to product search, it's going to have a simple search. Now, if we just type in something like dog, or actually, let's use the one I used online, which is age to perfection. Simply click search, and what you're going to see is the term and a quick trademark check, and then you're going to be able to click View Listings, which will then bring up the Amazon page where you can scroll through and see exactly what's selling. Now, along with that, we also have the Merch Hunter, which everyone wanted on mobile. We have so many requests on this, so we actually decided to release it. So you simply come here, you can enter a keyword if you want, but otherwise just click Search, and you have all of the products right here which you can then favorite, see the BSR, see the rank, and then you can come over here and see them in your favorite t-shirts, which you can then email yourself. The last thing that I wanna go over just real quick is we put in guides. So everything that we put up on the blog, give it a chance to load here, you can come here and just read it on your mobile app. All right, so that's about it for Merch Informer. If you guys have not signed up, Go sign up. It's three day free trial, absolutely free. If you hate it, cancel it. But otherwise, t check out all the tools we've put in there. We've been putting a lot of work in. We do have two or three new modules that we're going to be releasing fairly quick here as we finish up the keyless version. Everything's moving forward. So give it a check out and let's jump into the presentation. Hello, everyone. Now that I'm finally back on the computer, we can actually go over the slides. First, I want to apologize. I do not have a webcam on my actual desktop, so you're going to have to just look at the slides, but you know, that should be okay. I'll try to cruise through this as fast as possible. Now, once that, now that I'm sitting down, I actually want to go over kind of how to realize your merch potential. Now, I know that's the tagline for Merch Informer, and I know there's been a lot of jokes going around, you know, Ken, for one, has said that I have a 100k tier account, and, you know, I just saw the other day someone mentioned I was at 40k. I kind of want to explain those jokes, you know, they're not that far from the truth, I'll kind of go over why that's the case. 
But before we do that, I kind of want to talk about who I am, how I got started merch by Amazon, and I want to go over a ton of different mistakes that I've made in the program. I started pushing carts at Target for $8 an hour. So anyone outside of the U.S., Target is basically a big retail store, sort of like Walmart. And, you know, I made $8 an hour. I actually, that summer, I, I had to find a job. I had just moved to a different town. I had to find a job. I applied for 83 different places. I got a single call back, and that was from Target, and that's the only job I got that summer. So I made eight dollars an hour. I pushed shopping carts out in the parking lot. You know, I pushed them in the winter. So I lived in Wisconsin. I pushed them when it was you know ten below, and I pushed them when it was a hundred and fifteen degrees outside. Now it paid the bills. I was living in a really crappy studio apartment, one that was so bad that it actually rained in my apartment. So the roof leaked every time it rained. But you know, it paid the bills. And it afforded for me to live and, you know, kind of figure out what I was doing in life. But I hated, I hated working there. People treated me like I was, you know, bottom of the barrel, that I was going to be, I was stupid, that I was stuck at Target for the rest of my life. So I was kind of looking for a way out. And one day I was sitting on this website called Flippa, which is a marketplace for online businesses. And I noticed this one site was selling for 40 grand. So I took a look at it and it was very, very simple and actually looked quite ugly. So I thought to myself, you know, I should be able to do this. I can easily put together a website. So I taught myself how to make a website and I put up something similar and I was all excited that I was going to, you know, retire in the next few months because I was going to make all this money and I didn't see any traffic. I didn't make any money. So I kind of had to go back to the drawing board and I realized in order to get this traffic, I needed to learn how to rank different keywords in Google. So once I actually figured out how to do that, which was a process in in of itself, it took me about six months. Then I was making pretty decent money. I went back to Target and I told them, you know, put in my two weeks, put in my two weeks and sorry about that, put in my two weeks and it was the best thing to happen. Felt great. So at the time, I'm doing these niche websites. I'm actually expanding my horizon. I'm going into different niches, different verticals. And I was going to school at the time at UW-Madison for economics and political science. And I thought I wanted to go to law school. So that's something I'd always been interested in. I actually did take the LSAT, which is the test you need to take before you go to law school. But I woke up one day and I'm like, you know what? I'm making decent money what I'm doing. I'm not really the type of person to put on a suit every day and go to a job. So I said, hey, I'm going to take a chance on myself. We'll see what happens. I can always go back later if I want to. So after I started full time in this business, you know, I was doing affiliate marketing. I was running PPC campaigns on Facebook. I was doing I was doing apps. I was basically putting my hands in every single part of Internet marketing that I could to see, you know, what I liked, what I was good at. And what I could make money with. That's kind of where I started doing FBA. So I jumped straight into the deep end and I tried to do private label right away. I didn't know anyone in the space. I didn't know anyone that could help me in China. I didn't know anyone that could help me with the shipping. All I knew is that I wanted to do private label. So I stayed up late. I had meetings with China. I, you know, I put a bunch of money into inventory. I got it shipped over here. And, you know, FBA was great, and it's great for a lot of people, but I could just not make it work. It worked for a month or two, and I was doing really, really well, but, you know, I had to deal with inventory costs. My inventory got stuck in customs multiple times, so that was a real fun trip. I was sick of staying up till 4 or 5 in the morning talking with my suppliers. You know, I had to deal with customer support. It was awful. So right around this time, one of my business partners in a previous business, kind of where I met kind of someone who I met in affiliate marketing sends me this TechCrunch article and it's all about Merch by Amazon and it just released and I was reading through this article and I realized you know you don't have to hold any inventory you can sell to Amazon's you know two billion visitors a month with no inventory and you don't have to deal with customer service 
So I kind of saw the light. I kind of switched my mindset. And I'm like, you know what? All I have to do is put up these designs and I make a royalty. Now, I am by no means an actual designer, right? I can't design anything. But what I can do, I had Photoshop. And what I can do is I can drag and drop and I can write a sentence. So that's exactly what I did. I found some, I found some clip art or some vectors. I dragged them into Photoshop. I typed, you know, a few words and I exported them as a PNG and that was my design. So I uploaded them and what, you know, I, I saw sales within the first week and right away I was just hooked. I was like, you know, I put these designs up. I didn't have to talk to anyone. I didn't have to deal with anyone. I didn't have to stay up talking to anyone in China or any suppliers and I got paid for it. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. So I expanded as quickly as possible. So what that meant is that I had to figure out how to outsource my designing, which I'm fairly familiar with because I was outsourcing articles for my affiliate business. I put up a ton of designs. I learned how to research. I quickly went to five figures a month and over in income. And then that's kind of where I started Merch Informer with my business partner because I was spending five to six hours a day sitting on Amazon typing in all these keywords that I thought up in my head or I'm looking on my desk for different ideas. And at the same time, I have to run my affiliate business. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, how can I save time? How can I find designs that are selling really well? How can I find where people are spending money without spending all of my time on this? And that's why we started it. So I know you saw the screen for a split second before by mistake, but you know, one of the parts of the business that most people don't like to talk about is actually the selling of the business. So you spend all this time, you spend all this effort building up a royalty generating business that is bringing in royalties, you know, day in, day out while you sleep. And that's actually worth something. You know, it's worth the royalties you're bringing in, but it's also a business because you have intellectual property in the designs you put up in the keywords and everything that you're putting in you've put hard work into this and you're building an actual business so to my knowledge i actually sold the very first merch by amazon business and as you can see here we sold it for seventy three thousand dollars and then i actually sold one you know a few months ago for ninety three thousand dollars so this is something i really enjoy it's probably one of my favorite aspects because you can cash out quite large instead of you know the monthly income but i love every part of the business and i'm still doing it this is just one that's not talked about very often i thought i'd throw it in here that i actually do know what i'm talking about because each one of these was earning around you know three thousand dollars a month so not actually not too much but the multiplier there is it's great. So before I get into kind of how to take your account and just blow it up and make a ton more money, I want to take a step back and talk about all the mistakes that I've made personally in my personal account and kind of what mistakes I see other people in the community making. So as I've said, I am not a designer at all. I can barely even open Photoshop. So I want to talk about mistakes I've made outsourcing. I want to talk about mistakes I've made doing trademark checks because when I first started, I had no idea what the USPTO was. I didn't know what copyright or trademark was. I had no idea what the difference between them was. I made mistakes listing my designs when I first started, you know, I didn't read the content policy, so we're going to go over that a little bit, and then we're going to talk about reviews just very quickly. So the first mistake I made is that I basically just put these designs up right away, and I did not learn or even think about if I could be using these designs or these different vectors or images that I found, I had to learn about commercial use. Now, if we step back a few years, maybe three or four years ago, I got a very important lesson in commercial use. So I'm running these affiliate websites and I use a picture of an orange in one of these articles I put up. So I put up this picture of an orange. And I was just pulling images from Google. I thought you could use those. You know, why not? They're on Google. Turns out that is not the case. And I got a very angry cease and desist letter that they were going to sue me for this amount of money and that I needed to take down this image right away. And all it was was a picture of an orange. So, of course, I took it down, but, you know, I'm super scared. This is when I was in college and I was absolutely broke. I took down the design. 
and I kind of had to learn about what Creative Commons was. Now, these are licenses called Creative Commons. They're usually called CCO. Uh, what this is is they're free for commercial use. So you can anything that has a Creative Commons license on it, you can actually use it on a print-on-demand platform. You can use that to create your own designs to actually sell to customers. So when it comes to merch, I quickly remembered that lesson from my affiliate marketing days. I read up on the Creative Commons, and from then on, I had to make sure that designs I was putting on the internet were actually free to sell. The people I wasn't infringing on anyone's intellectual property. So especially when it comes to outsourcing, you need to make sure that your designers are saying compliance. So the best way to do this is get the designers that you hire, get them to send links to every single design element within the design itself. So that way that you can look yourself, go to these links, look and see what kind of license they have, if you're allowed to use them or not. So this is a trick that I like to use. Some of you might be familiar with it, some of you might not. If you use the Chrome browser, if you take a screenshot of the design that your designer gets back, let's say for some reason you did not you did not get your designer to come back with links to every single design element, right? You just get back a PNG, you're like, wow, that looks great. For this example, I mean, this doesn't look terrific, but this is something that would sell. So you get it back, you take a screenshot of it. Now, if you use the Chrome browser, you right-click on the image, you scroll down, you click Search Google for Image. And what that is going to do is it's going to bring up you know, a Google page and it's going to show you it does this image exist anywhere else because you want to know right then and there if a designer copied this image from someone else. Very easy to tell if you do that. So there's a lot of other, this is called a reverse search engine searching essentially. There's a lot of other reverse search engines out there. Probably one of the oldest that I remember is called Tin Eye. Works great. There's one called Bing image match and there's also karma decay which is karma decay is just focused on reddit but reddit is a social network it's, you know fourth or fifth biggest social network out there where people like to share different images so that's one you can check as well but when we're talking about mistakes this is actually one that i made personally so if you take a look at this image i thought that this is a cat if you didn't if you didn't know that this 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 cat i thought was a hand-drawn cat. I thought it was really cute. It was part of a design that I had created. This is one of the first designers I hired. You know, I had no idea. It looked pretty good. I uploaded it, and a few days later, it came down. So if I would have actually taken my own advice, you screenshot the cat, you right-click, you say, search Google for image. This cat is actually named Pusheen, which is some sort of Japanese anime cat, something like that. I don't know. It's intellectual property of another company that I had no right to use. So if I would have just taken my own advice, I could have clearly avoided that strike on my account. So the second mistake I made, and something that every person in the Merch by Amazon space needs to eventually learn, is... Number one, what is the USPTO, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office? And two, how do you look up the keywords, the sayings, the different phrases that you're using on you know, the test website, which is the trademark electronic search system? So you need to make sure that any trademarks that are out there and that are live, you are not infringing on because they can use that to take your designs off of Amazon and that leaves a strike on your account. So if you just Google USPTO trademark search, you're going to come up to a website. It's going to be the number one result. Click that and then click uh, the trademark electronic search system as you see here. It's going to come up like this. You click on the basic word mark search. And then you'll see a page that looks like this, and you'll just hit it. You'll just type in a phrase that you want to use. Now, for this one, I typed in aged perfection because this one has been going around the Facebook groups a lot. Just sum and hit submit query. Now, what that's going to do is bring up this page right here. If you've never seen this page before, you're probably going to be a little bit overwhelmed. I know I was. I had no idea what any of this meant. So I'm just going to summarize this real quick. You have the word mark here. So what you're looking for is a few things. You want to make sure that the word mark is the exact mark that you typed in. So in this case, H perfection. 
a lot of the times people come here and they might see vintage H perfection. They'll see that it's live and they'll immediately think, oh, I can't use that. Darn, I might go back to the drawing board. But here's the thing. You need to be looking for two things, a serial number and a registration number. So when you first apply for a trademark, which we've done with Merch Informer, it actually takes you know, 9 to 12 months to go through the entire process. So when you first register, you get a serial number. And it goes through all these different steps. And once all the steps are completed, you get a registration number. So when you have a serial number and a registration number, it means that the mark is live and enforceable. So you're looking for a serial number and a registration number and that the word mark is completely exactly the same. Now, there's two things you need to do, right? You don't know, this has a serial number and a registration number, as we can see. We don't know for what goods or services this mark is for. So you need to be able to click on the actual mark, read what kind of goods and services it's live for. Also, if it doesn't have a registration number, that means that you know it's going through the process it might become live in the future. So you can click on the TSDR button, and what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to read through the trademark and see what step of the process it, it is on. You will see who applied for the trademark, what kind of attorney they're using, what goods and services they're trying to put through. You can actually read the mark. So make sure you're reading that when you do these searches. So I know I just, I quickly talked about these. Make sure it's got a serial number and a registration number. It has to have both to be done going through the entire process to make sure the word mark is enforceable. Make sure you are clicking on the word mark to read what category it's in and make sure you click on the TSDR to read more into the mark if it's not live or, you know, you can see who applied for it. Just real quick, if you actually click on the name of the mark, age perfection, you see that it's for t-shirts. It's got a serial number. It's got a registration number. Here's the person that owns it, and it is live, so you can't do this. Now, one another mistake that I made is that, you know, once I learned about the trademarks, I thought this was just for the design. Turns out that's completely wrong. It actually has to do with the title, the brand, the bullet points, and the description. So one of the shirts that I originally put up, you know, I'm from Wisconsin, so I put up a straight out of Green Bay shirt. Now this is clearly a Packers shirt, but it just said straight out of Green Bay. I didn't mention the Packers anywhere, but in the in the bullet points, I said something like, you know, if you're going to, if you're, I don't even know what I said. This was a year or two ago. I, I basically said, if you want to enjoy the game at Lambeau Field, you know, dot, dot, dot. Well, that got rejected or that got pulled down. I got a strike against my account. And if, if I would have looked up Lambeau Field for a trademark, I clearly see that it's trademarked for almost everything. And as you can see here, it's dress shirts, night shirts, polo shirts, sweatshirts, and right there, T-shirts. So I got a strike against my account, something really stupid that I could have avoided. But, you know, lesson learned, moved on. Hopefully I don't make that mistake in the future. So when you're listing your designs, it's very similar to FBA. Now, I know a lot of the Merch by Amazon community has never done FBA, but if you have, or even if you haven't, you want to make sure you have good keywords. You want to make sure you have readable listings. That means relevant title, relevant brand, readable bullet points, and readable description. So if I were to boil this up in one coherent kind of thought, you want to make sure that in the two to three seconds you have that a customer sees your page you want to make sure that you are conveying customer trust. That is the most important thing that you can do when you are building these listings. So if you have a good title, but your brand is just something super spammy with a bunch of keywords, it's not conveying customer trust. So I like putting keywords in my brand. Don't get me wrong, but you can't just list off keyword after keyword after keyword. It needs to be something that sounds similar to a brand name. So just keep that in mind when you are building your listings. This right here is an example of a shirt that's been up for a long time. I took a screenshot of it and just put it up here. I think it's infringing on Game of Thrones, but you know, hasn't been pulled down yet. Not really sure why. But the entire point of this slide is to show you that these are terrible, terrible bullet points. As you can see here, it says cat lover shirt, mother of cats, hot 27 t-shirt. 
comma, keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword, comma, just over and over and over again. This isn't readable. This doesn't convey trust the customer. This is an example of an actual bad listing. So if this is your shirt, I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me, but this is something that you should work to fix. So the fourth mistake that I made, and I know the majority of other people out there are making, is they are not reading the content policy. The content policy is constantly changing. It's not exhaustive, which means that they can take things out, they can remove things, they can add things later. But, you know, the five biggest things that I want to go over are 2.3, so profanity, 2.5, human tragedy, 3.3, inaccurate product descriptions, 4.1, benefit cherry donations, and then 5.1, shipping and fulfillment. So when I first started, this was not in here. 2.3 was not part of the content policy, which means that you could put up as many profane designs as you wanted, and I put up a ton because they sold and they sold really really well because they invoked a response in the customer but, you know amazon is the seller of record when it comes to merch by amazon it's not a very good image for them so they changed that and they put this profanity thing in here so i i lost a ton of designs before i yanked the rest of them i had a bunch of profane designs up so no profanity you can put them on different print on demand services just not merch by amazon currently Second one is human tragedy. So with all the hurricanes happening or you know, anything else that's happening in the world with you know the Paris attacks, they might be okay because if you read here, it says excluding certain designs which commemorate or memorialize the loss of human life. So a lot of people kind of like to skirt on the edge. You know, this might be okay, this might not, but I'm going to put it up anyways. Amazon seems to kind of edge on the side of caution. So if you have anything related to this, I would just not put it up on Merch by Amazon. It's not worth getting a strike against your account. I would just completely skip anything that's even remotely related to human tragedy because more than likely it's not going to fly. So 3.3, we kind of went over this with the bad listing. But just to make it simple, if you have a design about cats, you, you shouldn't be putting dogs and your bullet points or titles or descriptions they need to be accurate because if you don't have accurate bullet points or you're actually describing the shirt it's something that's going to make a ding on your account and, and amazon's going to look very poorly upon that you know i know it the policy just changed so you can't talk about quality or you shouldn't be mentioning premium if you stick with your bullet points your title and your description, you're just describing the design itself, not the actual shirt, you should be good to go. So 4.1 benefit and charity donations. I was actually talking to someone at lunch a few weeks ago and they had this idea that they were going to create this design and they were going to put it up and then they were going to donate the profits to a local church to get out of tier 10. Now that's an excellent idea, but they thought they were going to put in the bullet points that they were going to donate this money to a church. Now you can donate money to anyone you want. You just cannot write in that it's for a charity or that it's benefiting anyone else that you're donating it in the bullet points, in the title, in the description. Just don't do it. That is the quickest way to get a strike and possibly a ban on your account. And finally, 5.1 shipping and fulfillment. I made this mistake a lot when it first started i don't think this was in there so two years ago i put every single listing i had i said this is printed and fulfilled in the usa and people just ate it up i got a ton of good reviews because you know america this america that well this changed and you know if you look around on different amazons you might notice that there's there's listings in other countries so clearly they don't want printed in the usa on those listings and I quickly had to go through and change thousands of different listings to say that they weren't printed in the USA. So just make sure you're not talking about the shipping, you're not talking about Prime, you're not talking about the fulfillment, and you should be good to go. So just a quick recap. I know you're going to see marijuana shirts on Merch by Amazon. These have slipped through the cracks. They are not allowed currently, so just don't do them. You're definitely going to see profanity shirts up. Even though these sold super well and they're actually quite hilarious, you know, <laughs> just don't do them. 
the, the quick takeaway from here is just because you see something up on Amazon and someone else got away with it, it does not mean that you can do it too. Because something I saw in the Facebook groups pretty recently was that you should treat merch sort of like your grandmother. So if there's something you wouldn't say to your elderly grandmother, you should not put that on merch. You know, you, you need to play it safe. You need to keep your account safe. I mean, it's super important because there's so much money that can be made. Play by the rules. Make sure that you're reading the content policy frequently. Go through once a week and see if they've added anything. See if they've removed anything. Just make sure you're compliant at all times. So the fifth mistake that I haven't really made, but I see this constantly when I'm doing my research, is these fake reviews. You know, you see it all the time. Five-star reviews, five-star reviews. And if a, if a customer that doesn't really understand how Amazon works comes to a page and they see these five-star reviews, they go, oh, oh, this person says this is an awesome shirt. That's kind of the social proof they need to buy that design. But as we all know, Amazon comes down on these sort of things. So the first thing you want to look for is this verified purchase tag. So if you see a bunch of these reviews that do not have a verified purchase tag, it means they left this review, but this account did not actually purchase that item. So one, do not do that. Another thing I see is I'll see a lot of one-star reviews, non-verified, on competitors' listings because people are mad that someone stole their image or yada yada. Don't do that either. That's a fake review because we know Amazon cracks down on these. They'll probably crack down on sellers for buying fake reviews in the future. Just don't do it. Now, if it's kind of an on-the-line question, you know, I've seen, hey, my daughter bought five of these shirts. Can she leave a review of my listing? I'm not going to say she can't, and you probably would get away with it, but is it really worth risking your account for one five-star review? My... You know, my go-to is no, just don't do it. If you, have, if you have to ask, just don't do it. Make sure your account is safe. Don't play around with the reviews. It's just not worth it. So that's kind of all the mistakes that I've made, and I know that most of you, if you've been in this game long enough, have made them too. But one of the good things is, is once you make all these mistakes, you can learn from these mistakes and you can actually take these mistakes and use them to scale your Merch by Amazon business. So what I mean by that is, you know, once I figured out that you have to be checking trademarks and that trademarks take nine to 12 months to go through, I figure I need to, I need to check these trademarks every single day for new designs. I need to keep up with them in the future. So that's kind of why we added the trademark module to Merchant Former, but I use that to scale my business up and, and upload more designs, but at the same time staying compliant. So this kind of brings me to the three main points of quote unquote realizing your merch potential. The first thing, and I try to practice this myself, you need to be able to maximize your daily uploads. Now when you're in a higher tier, this is going to be way harder. But this is probably one of the number one things you can do to just skyrocket your income. And that goes hand in hand with doing great research. When it comes to doing research, you don't want to be competing against 25,000 designs that are super similar unless you can find a way to stick out. So the example I like to use here is the Eclipse Niche. The people I know that absolutely cleaned up and made 40 fifty sixty thousand dollars with eclipse they found a way to differentiate themselves outside of every single listing that looked the same and that's why they made such good money and finally you want to make sure you're using good listings so you're using good keywords you're using proper sentence structure and you're describing the actual design without talking about you know, fulfillment this or prime this. You want to make sure that your listings are really solid and that you're conveying customer trust. So those three things are the best things you can do to actually grow your own account, but there's something so much easier and much, much quicker to just make more money with Merch by Amazon. And that's just to help new sellers avoid problems. So I know people are out there, they're teaching new sellers about outsourcing. You know, there's books, there's courses about this. You can teach new sellers about trademark and copyright. You can teach new sellers how to research. You know, I try to do this with the Merchant Former blog. And you can teach new sellers how to make good listings. 
But at some point, you know, you want to cash in on your own time, right? I mean, we all want to make more money and teaching other people how to do merch by Amazon is kind of creating competition a little bit, but it's also taking away from growing your own account. So the number one way to realize your Merch by Amazon potential is to recruit new sellers to Merch by Amazon. So this is just five really quick screenshots of people that I've personally helped get started in Merch by Amazon. And as you can see, they're doing quite well. So these people have figured out these are all we running weekly totals. As you can see, you know, they're each making a little bit different monthly or rather weekly royalties. They're each doing a different amount of products sold. They each have a different pricing strategy. But these are all people that I helped get started on the platform. And here's the thing, guys. If you extrapolate these numbers, so those were weak. Let's just go back here. You see, these are weekly estimated royalties. Now there's four weeks in a month, and we just add all these up, right? So we times four, and we add them up. That's nineteen thousand dollars, almost twenty grand, every single month that I've helped people kind of create for themselves. That's a lot of extra money. That's only five people I've helped bring to the program, and here's where the magic happens: when you bring these people on to merch by Amazon, you're bringing in good sellers and helping them create good listings and helping them make that money. You sign them to a contract. Now these might be your friends, these might be acquaintances, but you can create a contract and you can take 50% of their earnings. Now this might be 50%, this might be 20, it might be 75, it kind of all depends on what you're doing. But what you do is you bring these good sellers to the platform and you sign them to a contract. Now, why would these people want to give you 50% at all? Okay. Well, one is that you have experience. You've been doing this. You've learned how to create these royalty generating businesses for, you know, Merch by Amazon is two years old. Maybe you've been in it since the beginning. Maybe you've been in it for six months, a year. You know exactly what it takes to create a royalty generating business. Another reason is you have time and they don't. You know, this kind of plays into the last point here is that a lot of people that you bring in, even if they're very, very good sellers and they, they listen to your advice and they learn from your mistakes, they might have day jobs, which means they're working 40 hours a week for someone else while you sit here and you work for yourself. So you have time and they don't. And here's the best part, okay? When... Normally, when I do this and I bring someone in to kind of my network, I end up doing about 100% of the work up front. You know, they get an account, they're not really excited about it, but then you start, you start uploading, and you get the 10 slots, you know, you might get, you might get tiered up to 25, might get tiered up to 100, but as soon as you upload enough shirts where this account is seeing daily sales, Whoever you've partnered with doing this is going to start to notice. And once they see that sales are coming every single day and they see the royalties start adding up and adding up, they're going to get really excited. And what I've noticed almost 100% of the time is that these people are going to get so excited that they, they continuously ask you questions, they want to get more involved, and all of a sudden they start doing the majority of the work. They're going to start asking you how to do the research. They're going to make sure that they are doing the uploading properly. They want to learn about keywords. Now, my girlfriend is actually a perfect example of this. If you've been following the Merchant Former blog, you've noticed that I've been doing a case study on her. But just to give a quick recap, she signed up for Merch by Amazon, you know, a long time ago, got accepted. This was when the account started at 25 tier. I gave her 25 designs. She uploaded them, and then, you know, that was that. She was in school. She was working a job. Really just unexcited. Didn't really care about merch. Well, turns out her car got hail damage. Had to get rid of that. She's in a bunch of debt from school. And I said, hey, you know, Merch by Amazon is the perfect way to kind of dig yourself out of that debt. You're going to make a lot of money. Let me just help you outsource the designs. We'll talk about how to use the keywords and we'll get going on this. 
So, you know, I, we outsourced some more designs. She uploaded them, you know, not, still not really caring much. But as soon as the sales started coming in, you know, one sale, two sales, all of a sudden 10 sales, all of a sudden she's doing 20 a day. All of a sudden, you know, the interest spikes. They get really excited and they're checking their dashboard 35, 50 times a day. How many sales did I make? How many? And they all of a sudden they take over the majority of the work. So even though that you started doing 100% of the work up front, as soon as those sales roll in, because you know exactly what you're doing, so you can teach this to other people. When those sales roll in, the partners in this business will take over. They'll do most of the work and you can sit back and collect a royalty. Now, what's your royalty? It could be 50%, it could be 25%, it could be 75%. It's really all kind of what you negotiate. That's kind of all, but let me just back up to the slide right here. Now, let's say that you've done really, really well on Merch by Amazon, and you're doing $10,000 a month in royalties. Okay, if you put this method into place that I've told that I've kind of gone over here today, and you bring in good sellers to the platform and you teach them how to do research and you teach them how to do these uploads, you can make so much more money so easily. Now, the, five people a month doing decent, right? They're not making 10K a month, but they're doing decent. This is weekly royalties. Remember, times four, we're extrapolating for monthly. Just bringing five decent people in is adding 19000 almost $20,000 a month. Now, if you're taking 50% of that, you're adding $10,000 a month in, in you know income to your own pocket without doing much work at all. Now, if, if you just think about that, maybe you're bringing one person in and you're only bringing home an extra $1,000 a month. Now, for you, that might not be much, but for someone else, $1,000 a month is life-changing. That is a car payment. That's a mortgage payment. You know, an extra $1,000 a month to most people is something like unfathomable. But if you can take these numbers, so if you bring five people in, imagine if you brought in, so five people are bringing in 19000 a month. Imagine if you brought in 10 people. Imagine if you brought in 15, 20 people. 50% of this number starts to add up real quickly. So that's kind of going back to when Ken or anyone else makes those 100K slot jokes. This is kind of what they're talking about because we've had these conversations before. You know, each of these accounts, you know, once you grow them, they get to be 4,000, they get to be 8,000 tier. And since you kind of have, you know, a 50% ownership stake in those businesses, there's really a lot of money to be made on the table. So just just wrapping it up, that's about it, all I have today. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. If this is on Facebook, drop them in the comments below. If this is on YouTube, drop them in the comments below there. I will more than likely be doing a live Q&A kind of around this topic in the coming weeks. But if you have any immediate questions, reach out to me at admin at merchantformer.com. That will go straight to my inbox so I can answer them at any time. But other than that, make sure you rewatch this. Kind of get an idea of you know, what you're doing. I know most of you know exactly what you're doing. And that's kind of why this method works so well is because you can take what you've learned and kind of apply it to bringing new people into the program. So it's kind of a win-win for everyone. It's a win for you. It's a win for merch. And it's a win for whoever you bring in. Uh, that's about it for today. Thank you for listening. If you made it this far, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.